Okay, welcome. My name is Sam Price, the Crypto Lifer, and every single week on Friday, I give you the macro analysis, and today I have a little twist. I'm going to give you something at the end that you definitely want to think about. We're going to go over Bitcoin, total, total three, Bitcoin dominance, tether dominance, the DXY, and two charts that you're definitely going to want to see that have some big implications of what could be happening in the crypto space. So without further ado, let's break down Bitcoin on the weekly. Let's talk about it. As you can see, last week I was very bullish for Bitcoin, right? We had this green, red candle forming, but I kept saying the 21 was coming. We had crossed the 200 SMA, which is bullish, and the 50 was coming for the 200 SMA. A golden cross coming on the weekly, which is a very bullish sign. I was using the five-day chart. Remember, since this weekly analysis really began, and I've been doing it every single week, I kept telling you as long as we stayed above the 200 SMA on the five-day, and as long as we didn't go below into this flag, that we were going to be remain bullish, and that's exactly what happened. We exploded outside of that. The 21 day has now crossed across the 200 SMA, which is an extremely bullish sign on the week, on the five day chart. I looked at it on many other assets from the Dow Jones, the gold. Every time you have the 21 day passing the 200 SMA, a massive rally ensues. That's what I'm seeing right here on the five day. You can see we have clear resistance, resistance right here for Bitcoin at about 44,700, 445, we'll even call it. Once we get about 445, there's really only a bit right here at 47,000. And then it's a little nudge at 51, and we could easily see ourselves getting to 57 and the 60K. There's not a lot of resistance on our way up to the top here. Uh, pretty exciting for what's happening for Bitcoin. So off right off the bat, I am b b bullish. What's the bear scenario? I mean, the bear scenario is you're overbought on the stochastics. You're getting a little high on the RSI, extended on the MACD. At the same time, all the big rallies happened when we were getting very overbought on these indicators, and then we had massive rallies. The big... Timeframes can stay pinned up here for pretty long. That doesn't mean we're not, we couldn't get a pullback. We could, we are far from the 21, but I'm going to leave it up to the daily and the three day chart to kind of decide where we're going. And that's, that's usually a really good compass. I've, I've found that over years and years of trading. I look at my bigger time frame, and then if we can, you know, basically create flags and bullish uh, momentum on the other time frames a little bit below them, you can still push through the other time frames, even if they stay pinned. But you'll, you'll learn this over time. We look at the five-day chart now. I'm expecting price action to at least interact with the 21. The same as the three-day. But so far, look at the three-day, which will close another three-day chart, which will close in... Oops, sorry. Whenever you do that, it, it heads over the top of it. Come on. What are you doing? Oh, the line's on. One day in five hours, this three-day chart will close, okay? So we have this beautiful, what looks to me, to be an ascending triangle on the three-day chart, Right? And we're getting, you know, and eventually we'll touch, hopefully in six more days, we'll go sideways for six to nine more days, touch the 21. And then our conservative target is the length of this pole, which brings us to about 53,000. And our bigger target, you know, which is interesting, is the first time we can actually have a target that brings us to 60,000. It, it says 60, $63,000. And by the angle, it means somewhere by February or March, we could be headed into 60K as we head into the halving. So, very bullish sign on the three-day for me. You've reset on the stochastics. So you went up, had all this time to reset, still bullish. So to me, it says is we can consolidate sideways. Now, I was looking more for a, a, a pullback like this, back to support. It would make the most sense to me. And, you know, give you kind of, you know, whenever you pull back to support, it's, it kind of lets you breathe easy because you're like, all right, we came and tested. Now we can continue to move. If you never test, you're wondering when the bigger pullback will, be, will, will come. However, Bitcoin is extremely bullish, and it did break above this resistance. You can even see there's a three-day resistance uh, and support now holding at 39,700. So about 40K is even holding a support for Bitcoin. So I love what I'm seeing. The closer we get to the 21-day moving average, the more likely this flag is going to break out to the upside. All right? Get away from the projections here. We don't need them. And now we're watching the daily time frame. And the daily looks very bullish to me too as well. May come back down to the bottom of the pattern as we've hit resistance. For whatever reason, Bitcoin, one, two. You know, your bearish scenario is that you're double topping. You're making an M. And you're going to end up back down here. Not the worst thing in the world if we do that. That will be the three-day resetting and, you know, we'll have a falling wedge. So, you know, I'm not going to be overly bearish unless we break the 200 SMA on like a five-day or a bigger chart. You know, and as long as we're staying above the 200 SMA on the five-day, the three-day chart, even on the daily we're good to go. You know, the first thing that would happen bearishly is we would lose the 200 SMA in like the 22 hour and then we would go from there and, and I would start to kind of show you the bearish scenarios. 
But so far, I mean, we're still healthily bullish. There's really no reason to, to flip bearish at this present moment in time. Now, the 22 hours a little overbought, so is the 8 hour. They're both suggesting that we could come further to the downside. You know, even the 4 hour, which has been having a hard time, it's, it's making a bit of a possible Bart Simpson head here that could break us to the downside. So we've been watching this. I precariously, you know, going through the charts this, today on the live stream, kind of changed this trajectory a little bit and made it a little sharper. Realized that that probably left the pattern, came back inside. It makes sense to me. So I'm breaking the rules a little bit, but you can break the rules once you know the rules. And then I take the length of this poll. I'm watching this on the four-hour time frame for a possible long-term play. This would take you to 52K, all right? That would be the measured move. The entry would be right around now. If you could get the bounce at the bottom of the pattern at 43.1, it would be amazing. The target, 52,000. The stop loss would be below that crazy wick low. You know, here you would have to go here. Now, it's a 2.76, 2.62. It's not a 3 to 1 risk to reward, ra risk -to -reward ratio like I, that's what I usually do and go for. But it's, you know, it's decent. Tight moving averages near the 200 SMA, getting oversold. You know, I don't love the 8 hour and the 12 hour. They're a little, but the daily looks good. The consolidation looks good. And so it's highly likely we're going to get a breakout, in my humble humble opinion, into next week. And we may get that Santa rally into Christmas this weekend and into next week on Monday. So Santa rally is not canceled. Everything's good. What cancels the Santa rally is if we lose this trend line, right? And then what we'll do is we'll lose the 100 SMA, the 200 SMA on the one hour, and we'll head down here. But we've, been, we've had a bunch of bearish moment, moments here, and we keep getting back above the 200 SMA on the one hour. We keep getting tight. This tells me a big move is coming. The one hour looks very aggressive for a pump, a pump to the upside right now. So when you just look at the one hour by itself, it looks very aggressive. It tells me that it may get a bit of a pump. And I know this is macro weekly analysis, but I just want to show you kind of where, where we may be headed into the weekend. You know, and I'm watching this, what, is, what I call a bullish rectangle here. And as long as that stays in there, we have another measured move of a move to the upside here on the one hour time frame. Sorry. Let me get my, thank you. And that brings us somewhere to about 46.8, almost to 47,000. So uh, I'm watching both these flags. I like what I'm seeing. And I'm, I'm about to start DCA. You know, maybe I'll do three $500 buy-ins on leverage into the four-hour chart. I like this four-hour ascending triangle. And you know what? I'd, I, I would love to get stopped out and take a shot at this. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't mind getting stopped out uh, because this could be an epic move that I'd rather take. I'd rather get stopped out and, not, and basically take a shot at this bigger move then miss this big move. You know what I mean? Because if I get stopped out, I can always reconvene when we make the fallen wedge, and there's still probably a chance I can get I can get the pump. So I like what I'm seeing here for Bitcoin, and this is my macro analysis for Bitcoin. As long as we stay in, in this trend, everything looks pretty good to me, and the daily is uh, setting up pretty nicely too as well. All right? There's still there's some bearishness. It's not all bullish, but uh, this trend line really is holding us down uh, as of right now. The total market cap in all of cryptocurrency, you know, same thing, high on the weekly, but pushing really nicely. The last time we talked about it, we went over like the three-day and said we were in a nice flag on the three-day, close to the 21, touching. Same thing here on the daily. The daily is absolutely in a flag and has already broken out of the flag to the upside. So all already looking a little different than Bitcoin. What's interesting about this is we just got above the, the 200 SMA on the five-day chart. Remember, I talked about this on Bitcoin. When we just gotten above the 200 SMA on the five day, a huge pump ensued. This tells me that a huge pump is coming on total market cap and we will rip up to probably $1.85 trillion. So what happened to Bitcoin is likely going to happen to the, to the altcoins, right? And that's going to spill into the total market cap and push the market cap up. So very bullish sign that you're right above the 200 SMA on the five day chart. Move forward to the daily. The daily just broke out and has legs to the upside. This tells me total is likely to go up to 1.85. So I'm looking one, two, three, four, five, six days. I'm looking to come back with to you guys next Friday and show that the total market cap somewhere has plowed further to the upside and we're up in here. Again, there is a bit of resistance. Could we double top and not make it up? There's a chance, but it's really bullish on the stochastics and the MACD that we're going to get the breakout to 1.85 trillion. Total three is the market cap of all the altcoins. And we told you they were bullish. We told you they looked really, really big for a move. We ended up getting that move. If you look at the daily, the last time we were together was seven days ago, what, on the 15th? It's the 22nd now. And we were right about here. I was drawing this flag and I had this line drawn and I said, we're likely going to break up to 528. So far, we're halfway from where I said we would be. 
We are breaking up to the upside. I see more momentum coming for Bitcoin. And uh, the Stokes reset while we went sideways, touching the 21-day moving average. Things are looking really, really good. The Adam and Eve double bottom beginning to play out. That even has a bigger uh, target to about $5 to $8 billion. So the altcoins looking strong for a move. Bitcoin dominance. You know, we saw that it was going to pump up. It did. We got a nice move. But then, wow, the last two days, the altcoins have ripped. Solana really taking, you know, basically forefront, kicking XRP out, taking over. Basically, you got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, and Solana. Solana now the third biggest coin in the game. Whoever would have thought Solana, but Solana did it. And, you know, Solana, we, I'm doing a video on it for my channel. And you go over all the things that it has. It has Solana Pay. Dang, right? For payments. It has NFTs, right? Boom. It's got meme coins taken care of. Uh, it's got De DeFi with Radium. It just seems to have its hands in every single pot, and it seems to work well, and people want to work with it. You know, Render wants to work with it. Companies are moving to Solana because it's quicker and faster. You know, people laughed about it because the network went down a few times last year, and that kind of, you know, created some issues. But for the most part, Solana really has been so strong. So Bitcoin dominance continuing to collapse here a little bit. And showing us that, you know, it may be making a lower high for a lower, uh, you know, making a lower low here. Definitely lost the trend line. So you can see this drop to the downside. Actually going to delete my work here. And we're going to see if there's something different that we can see for Bitcoin dominance. But, you know, when we're looking at it on the weekly and the macro analysis, it still suggests that it's going to hold this resistance and possibly still get a, a pre, you know, a move to the upside. But right now, some bearish div there. And, you know, do you get like a, a, a pullback here? You do see a rising wedge that could break down 68% of the time. Come back down to this major heavy resistance. This is good for the altcoins if we can get, you know, um, some downward pressure on Bitcoin dominance, even sideways pressure. You, you know, what I'd like to see is I would like to see Bitcoin dominance stay above its resistance, but just end up kind of going sideways. That could help out a little bit. We did have a nice pullback there. On the weekly. So what do I see happening for Bitcoin dominance? Well, let's get rid of the EMA and get our moving averages. So, I mean, you got a golden cross still coming on the weekly. It still looks bullish. If the ETF gets approved, I still think Bitcoin will have, you know, the, it will take its dominance back a little bit. A little pullback, but for the most part, I see a flag here on the weekly. And I see Bitcoin dominance just kind of maybe giving a little back to the altcoins, but not too much. I'd watch it closely. Tether dominance dropped as we said it would. If you remember correctly, we had us in this flag last time I was here on the 15th. We talked about a break into the downside. So far, it's half, you know, about a third through its downfall and starting to fall. We needed Tether dominance to dump. It still has more room to go. That tells us more is coming down to 482, which tells us that we should get more pump into the week and into Christmas. Santa rally still on if you look at Tether dominance, which is about to drop even more and lose even more of its dominance. Who wants to be in Tether? There's really no reason, right? Like the longer you're in Tether, the worse it is. The DXY connected to this idea has dumped on the weekly like we suggested, high weekly all the way down. You know, multiple weeks of pain to the downside. Also, the last time we talked to you, we showed you the four hour and we suggested that the four hour was going to break to the downside here on the 15th of December, right about there, right? It's been a week. It, it, Basically fell into this pattern. I drew this and we have dro dropped to the downside. However, starting to get a bullish divvy here on the DXY and it can only go down forever. Even the four hours suggesting somewhat of a pump up here for the DXY. So just, you know, it doesn't maybe Bitcoin and the DXY pump together. But right now it's saying we may get a reversal here. This could be a shoulder, a head and a right shoulder. So I'd look for this head to get made. It does look like on the four hour that the dollar index is going to pump back a little bit into Monday or Tuesday. So just something to think about the DXY, but what we like it just to kind of come up, even hit this channel and then continue further down and it's bigger overall downtrend that it's been in. But it could get a little bit of a reversal here. We take a look at the daily. The daily is also headed into oversold, but it, 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 yeah. I'm just trying to see, does the daily continue down? Does that four hour help it bounce back on out? You got that buy wick back up, right? For whatever reason, trying to, trying to prop the dollar up save it from getting dropped too hard i have it in this bigger channel with an even channel in the middle once it loses this even channel i see it breaking further down you know another thing about it is it lost let's see here it lost the 200 sma on the three-day chart 
usually says that there's way more downside for that. So look for it to kind of squibble around, but as long as it stays below the three-day 200 SMA, the dollar index has way more downside coming, in my humble opinion. Four hours going to try to bounce it back up, just see if it doesn't get back above 102.45. Or if it even uses this as like a bearish retest or make some type of bear flag. So I'm looking for this to make a bear flag. And for next week, seven days from now, you know, go sideways and we're, we're already starting to fall down in seven days. Now, I added an added thing here, Solana Bitcoin. Solana's doing so well, you figure it has to beat up on Bitcoin. And it is. I mean, it's been doing lovely. If you put one Bitcoin into Solana back in October 18th, all right, just one of the bit, bitty bitty Bitcoins, you would have now 185% gains on that Bitcoin. Pretty awesome, right, on a, on a scarce asset. And it broke out beautifully. Look, inverted head and shoulder with a sweeping, uh, uptrending, rising wedge that broke out parabolically to the upside. The target even is about 0.023901 Satoshis. Remember, you buy Bitcoin, then you buy this, and then you sell it back into Bitcoin. So you're looking at Satoshis each time. But this is really ripping. And, you know, Solana really becoming a major, major chain. And when you look at Sol ETH, it's almost, you know, it's it's... 74% of the way to its all-time high against ETH on the Binance chart. Can Solana, you know, basically get bigger than ETH? Could it flip Ethereum? I honestly think it could. Why? It moves faster. People like it better. Is way less fees. I would rather use Solana to do everything you can do on Ethereum. I like Ethereum. It was one of the first coins I got into. I knew it when it was $9. I got in when it was $89. I had, it's like a closeness to my heart. You know, I don't talk about it enough. And people are like, why doesn't he like Ethereum? And it's like the second biggest coin. But honestly, to me, it's, it's inefficient. Every time I used it in DeFi, I paid way too many fees. I'd much rather use Solana or any other DeFi solution. It's faster. It's easier. Clearer to use. Just, I, I'm, just, yeah, I'm just calling it out how it is. I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings who's heavy into Ethereum. I still hold about 20 ETH, you know, which is a good amount of money for most people. But it's just, you know, you know it's, not my, it's just not my thing, right? Anyway, so I wanted to show you Solana ETH. It's pushing up, and this thing could continue to the upside, really. It just bounced off that support. If it can consolidate like this, I mean, you're saying you're looking like Solana's going to beat up on ETH again and go for another rally. Had you put one Ethereum into Solana, let's say back at the beginning of December, just one ETH at the beginning of December, you would already have 60% on your ETH. So Solana ETH beating up on Bitcoin as well. Everyone, that's your macro analysis, all right? Just wanted to talk about how we gave you the Bitcoin chart, how we gave you the total chart, how we gave you total three. We gave you Bitcoin dominance, U.S. Tether dominance, right? The DXY, Solana, and for Bitcoin and Solana for Ethereum. That's going to be your macro weekly analysis for Bitcoin. Thank you for sticking with me throughout all these weeks. And I'll be back again next week to pick up where I left off. I hope you're really liking this. I am. It kind of bookends each week, shows us a lot of information, and you can see that the TA has been spot on. We are continuing up as suggested, and we're going to continue to give you this beautiful weekly analysis every single week. I love you. I appreciate you, and come back to the channel for more every single day. I go live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., and Saturday and Sunday nights at 8 p.m. I haven't taken a day off since February of 2021, and I don't plan on it. I love being a crypto lifer, and I love having you here on the channel. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. You can find out when I post my next video. And if you came to the channel, then you're already doing the right thing. Crypto is life.